Welcome back, everybody. Team Freedom versus Team NP. The score is currently 1-0. If you're just now joining us, you hear 1-0, you're thinking, all right, NP took game one, no problem. You'd be wrong. You'd be dead wrong. Team Freedom, they are the Radiant one currently team sitting 1-0 up in the series. And uh, looking to close this out, 2-0 against NP. Looking to close this out versus NP. Man, there NP. was such a, there was such a, a, a like, everyone... All the analysts that I talked to thought that it was it went like this. It was like NP Cole, top Ten two, seconds mm -hmm. and then NP Cole Onyx, top three. Mm -hmm. NP Onyx Cole, Five seconds remaining. probably Team Freedom fourth place. You know, it was like there was such a big difference we between Team time. Freedom, Team Onyx, and then the top two. Yes, but Team Freedom are proving Dada that they're just going to jump straight out of those tiers and beat the crap out of NP in game one. That was, whew. And this time, I talked about how I thought NP would take Dazzle first. Yeah. They do it. They They're do. just like, let's play safe, guys. Some leave it up. And SF Abaddon going to be Radiant first two pick, pick. Uh, for Team Freedom. I told you, though, these guys, they run at you. But they, it was a smart run it at It was you. a smart run issue. It was not constant aggression. They didn't over farm. I remember I said if they, with this draft, this is a draft that can win them the game. Yep. They ended up winning, but it was it was predicated on the fact that I thought NP Five would outplay them. Remaining. Freedom might farm aggressively here or there. You noticed uh, whenever Tomato would just like show by himself farming, he'd die. Yeah. But once they stopped doing that and they started playing this like team five man Dota, they're like, guys, we're a lot stronger than them five on five. So let's just keep doing that. And the funny thing is, uh, uh, like, uh, Team Freedom grouped up a lot. I, I like the way, for example, they played around their shrine yeah. a whole bunch, waiting for NP to make that mistake. And they never did. I think that, that was the cool thing is that NP in that game, they didn't make dramatic errors. In fact, they made really cool plays. The smoke wraparounds, team fight after team fight, being able to target the Magnus first. You know, especially when the enemy team knows it's coming. Like, second or third time that they managed to still accomplish killing Magnus first in a team fight was very impressive because Team Freedom knew it was coming and they still managed to make it work. Yeah. They, they smoked, Master. but even though they smoked, they still didn't Dada walk into high ground back. areas where I think lesser disciplined teams would, yeah. would do something like that and just, you know, like, ah, whatever, we'll just the run up there. The Roche number two and three were the big slip-ups slash where the game kind of just ended for them. They really needed to make those work. Once you, once those don't work out, Ten then the game becomes remaining. very complicated because, uh, especially for Freedom, Five you know, they both teams, both these, both those teams did Roshan very quickly, but for NP, it was almost a necessity because you need to be able time. to keep this Ursa alive. Right. You can't really run Ursa Radiant lineups without Roshan. Bad. Yeah, he needs, he needs Aegis. You take us quite badly. Uh, we are going to have Dyer a Beastmaster on the back. side of Team MP. I think this is um, a kind of a specialty to them. I, I know Beastmaster has been experimented with some teams, um, but I feel like NP are, are the ones who have made it work the most. It's it's a big greedy, which we've talked about Ten how MP do remain. play a little bit slower, a little bit more farm oriented. Um, the one thing I think they always Five try and make sure that remain. they do is their supports are very active. Um, in order to give the Beastmaster a Reserve good laning phase time. and get the, the farm needed to at least get Necro 1. I like this dual lane though, Dazzle Beastmaster. They ran it very successfully in uh, the DAC quals. We especially felt its wrath. Super annoying lane, right? Yeah, because it's just Four nobody dies. Poison. There's a lot of targets, yeah. Beastmaster shoves out the lane. Dazzle can pull it back. It's a cool lane. Juggernaut going to be banned by Team Freedom here. NP will take out the Ogre. Uh, Ogre SF. I mean, we've seen Ogre has a very high win rate in the yeah. qualifiers right now. Um, hasn't Bloodlust been run very much in NA, but we saw the power of it last game. The Bloodlust on the Juggernaut added a lot. Uh, same goes for the, the Silencer, actually. It's they all took he needs is that mid Rex. So quickly. Yeah, they did. I was surprised. It evaporated. I, I thought I was like, okay, they'll get a tier three, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and then they'll have to decide whether or not to go for buddy, melee against that. Is a, that was an empowered, bloodlusted uh, <laughs> juggernaut. juggernaut. I think this is a game. So, obviously, SF, another great target of the bloodlust. want to make sure that Team Freedom do not run a similar Ten style seconds, where they amp up the, the Shadow Fiend with a bunch of other heroes. Five seconds remaining. It, it does seem like maybe maybe the team has figured out 
Because before watching their play style, it just it didn't really click for me. Yeah. So maybe they they do need to worry. Uh, they need to focus more on being able to play off of one of these two cores, Tomato or BSJ, and that's how they can succeed. Because before it was like BSJ and Tomato were both not really fighting a whole lot and farming too much, and the Eagle and, and Jube and Ix Mike were trying to make things happen without their cores, and it, it just looked very disastrous. Yeah, there were moments where freedom slipped up a little, like the rotation in the jungle, but I like that they're looking for moves to make. Mm -hmm. Obviously, it could be more clean, but they are Radiant looking for moves to make. I uh, like this Warlock pickup by them, but... <clears throat> I mean, so far... I think if you're I think if you're freedom, you have to calm down a little. Yeah. It's being able to force yourself to be cold again, you know, and never get too overhyped over a win or a loss. Remaining. I think NP is a very good team at that. If they can keep their emotions in check, they don't let things run over. That's where uh, having veteran experience helps out a lot. And for Freedom, they have IX Mike who's been playing for a while, and you know, calm the team. Everyone needs to be calm right now. Like this is the time to chill out. Nothing's won yet. It's a best of one now. Ten That's how you should effectively remaining. think about it. Team NP will pick up the Five Vengeful Spirit. Uh, we were big fans of the Vengeful Spirit yes, due to are. the versatility in the draft that allows us, and we still had that Reserve versatility time. potentially. Team NP, a core Vengeful Spirit would look really strong here with uh, a Beastmaster off lane and uh, the Dazzle Weave, but it could just as easily be support if they uh, feel like the Venge is no longer uh, as viable as another core. I think this. Lineup though is a lot cleaner for MP. It's more five man, yeah. more team fight overall. They're they're not relying on only the pickup potential of a spirit breaker. That was greedy. Yes. This though is it's more balanced. So freedom. Please don't take something like PL. Just like um, last game, right? You um, you don't want to see a bad and warlock. It was a bad and. Ten Some other support remaining. with. Yeah. That would have no disabled. So we're kind of set on a bad off lane right now. Still Five need another support. Remaining. And down to see like a weave. Ooh, it's a spin. Wow. Cool hero against Dazzle. It's Radiant always been a cool hero against Dazzle. Yeah, I mean, they, it does very, seem very clear that MP are going to be Dyer running some sort of back. minus armor physical damage strat with the auras. Lots of 5 mana here. Yeah. So they go for a Dusa. Uh, looks like a very similar strategy to the Drow Ranger strat. Um, Vengeful Spirit as a core amps up the Medusa, makes her come online a little bit faster. Ten and still, seconds, you know, I think you do have to be concerned that Drill Ranger is a potential pickup. Yeah. Medusa, though, is very good against Fen. I think we saw that in. Yeah. There are lots of games Radiant that I've casted where Medusa back. just does really well against Fen. Because what do you do? You just, like, run in, you get yeah. stone gazed. Because Sven is such a. Like, he, go he, he goes on that hero and he doesn't let go. Yeah, because he just can't. He's going to be kited around. He only has so much time to work. There's around. a seconds. specific game, like that two specific be. games that I'm thinking of, where Dusa versus Sven was. Five it was one of the Liquid remaining. games. I think when Liquid I was at their coach. Manila Major, they yeah. ran Dro Ranger. Um, Dusa against Sven. Sven. Oh, Dusa. it was against yeah. uh, Vici or something. No, it was in the uh, it was in the finals that they pulled out the Medusa strategy. Was it? Yeah, against uh, OG. They lost though then. They lost that series, yes, but they won that game. No, there's no way. Really? Because the only game that Liquid won was with Ursa. Oh. Trust me, I Very would know. Well. <laughs> I was, yeah, I I was dying I, inside. I believe you. <laughs> it, they did run it against a Sven. I think it was against um, LGD. That's who it was. Oh, okay. It was LGD in the upper bracket. Or the lower bracket finals. And lower then, bracket finals? Oh, okay. And then I think we sense. casted a game where it was like Shanghai Major. It was like Fnatic ran it against OG, maybe? Yeah. Something like that. Fnatic were pulling out Medusa yeah. at that time. That's always been kind of the... That's kind of always kind of how it's been. Like, you know, people pick Dusa to counter. Because Sven is very burst-heavy. Once he goes in, he pops that Ghost Rank. Wow. Like, running people. Dire team Elder pick. Titan. So, a, in a different sort of way, more minus armor. Tons of team fight. Tons of team fight potential. Tons of team fight. Uh, Medusa, if you get a successful Stone Gaze... Um, that sets up a stomp, or vice versa. Ten a stomp can actually remain. set up the Medusa's ultimate to actually turn them into stone. Most of the time, Five Medusa's stone gaze remain. is sort of like a... Uh, oh! They threw a sword wow. curve. Wow! Sven support into a Slark carry now. What a bunch of bosses. That this is Slark cool. is going to go ham. Yeah, he loves going up against Medusa, right? Ooh, this is cool. You know what would have been even cooler? AM. Actually, I think he gets... 
Maybe he gets pooped on by Beastmaster ET. <laughs> yeah. Beastmaster is a little tough. All right. I mean, it's cool to switch around, but NP, I felt like they were definitely winning the draft before. It's a dramatic switch, yes, but is it enough to actually give them an advantage in the draft? You're not really going to have a fun time playing spend support. Yeah, let me tell you that. <laughs> Load up on those mangoes. Five seconds remaining. It's not fun. All right. Heading into game number two now. On a side note, do you say AUI or OWIE? Uh, I usually say AUI, but it switches good, up good. sometimes. Good. It's AUI, dude. Yeah, I know. I, I think I used to say Owie. And, uh, he I was the, he was the first person in Dota that I met in Warcraft 3. Did you know that? You met at, uh, like, a LAN or something? No, we met in, um, or I, I mean to say, like, I played with. Like, I just started playing Dota, and I was queuing for games, and I ran into this AUI guy. Ah, Rose. And we you played. Tried. We played one v ones because we were both cocky and we're like, I'm the best out of my friends. Uh huh. He, so we played all this stupid stuff. Like, I think we did like CM versus CM mid and DK versus DK. <laughs> Just not good matchups. Yeah. What's happening here? Did you win? Thirty uh, seconds. I think battle. he actually beat me, but I kind of don't want to admit that. I understand. Thank you. I live in a I won't city I won't dredge up those bad memories for you. Yeah. Oh, that's very cool. Uh, so what you saw at bottom SVG, he ran into the smoked Abaddon, so he knows for a fact that he placed it up there. Because where else is he going to place that ward if he was walking in that angle? Yeah. So instead, they get a very good quick D ward, which, again, we talked about how jungling with him isn't very easy, so he's going to need uh, wards like that. So he spots the rotation of the ET. Yes. So you want to give Tomato a, a 1v1 here. It's pretty important for the Shadow Fiend. But instead, it's an NP. Like, uh, they, they don't necessarily... Like, I know you want the SF to have the 1v1, but aren't they going to be really happy with the way their tool lanes are going to play out as well? I think so. I mean, I don't know how this top lane will go. I don't know how much tactical advantage this Sven provides. I can't imagine it is too dramatic unless you are clumped up and get two-man stunned. Yeah. Maybe if you get, like, level 2, you'll try to get some kill potential out, but... Or maybe you even just go right now to try to establish lane tempo, which is what they're doing, but Eagle doesn't really have an angle. And you are not playing Ogre, friend. In a way, he is, though. He's got five armor. Yeah, five armor, decent amount of HP. He's got a setup stun for the pounce, so we may be able to see a kill opportunity a little bit later on. Tomato. It's already a bit suffering here against uh, Eternal Levy's Dusa. He's got a lot of harassment damage done to him. You can only presume there was a successful snake bounce. You would be correct, Austin. Tomato, though, has got six souls. That's very fast six souls for an SF mid. Yeah, considering he didn't have the usual zoning support in the beginning. Yeah, he's very good. Being able to 1v1 like this, he's going to pick up boots first, a trend that we see nowadays more often than the bottle. And goes to the last hit, overboard for the deny. Uh, why Why is the uh, the boots more important? It's it's, is it because of Shrine and be Oh, the, uh, oh, the SJ! Come on! Oh. Alright, well, they're still going to try and get this kill. They need first blood. first blood! Eagle picks it up. They are going to be able to get the pounce on MSS as well. I doubt they have the damage stolen. unless Jubei can body block the hell out of him. He's block doing for it your so life. far. No! Block. No! Oh, you got, him. you got him in front! Oh, very far. Okay, no, 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 you need to run. You need to get out of here. You need to get out of here. He gets the kill. We'll get that kill, though. I think that's well worth it. Yeah. And bottom lane, the stop oh. goes down. Very good. They actually managed to kill SVG. Eagle's Eagle's taking gonna try a lot. and follow this up. He's got to go back and heal now too. This is a very quick start for Team Freedom. They pick up the first blood. Yeah. They nab a kill on cores. They're even going to make this uh, Venge play very far back. I mean, point Freedom. Yeah, that was a uh, cool mm -hmm. fast rotation there from Eagle. Ike's Mike is going to have to go. Oh, uh, his shine's already used, so. Never mind. Yeah. And this mid lane's going fine too. Your Shadow Fiend is pretty happy right now with his traded farm. Uh, Envy already out of mana. It just allows the SF to play really aggressively though, when you have these boots really quickly like this. Yeah. Like okay. you can just look at it. 
Yeah, he's just he's got the superior damage. Oh wow, what a play for there from uh, Tomato, trying to get the the kill on. Oh, he's trying to here. Oh, they don't go for it though. Yeah, if he just stood guard right here, I think they definitely have oh, that Eagles. kill. Running at him. He, he may just get have him. him. <laughs> He's he sees gonna... him for a second. Gets the vision. Get him. All right. You need probably two right clicks. One. And. Oh, oh no, no. The heal. You need three more. So okay. Fast. Now it's going to be Shallow Grave. And it's just a question whether or not he could survive long enough through the Shallow oh, Grave. Oh, no. <laughs> three HP. Uh, Turtle MP saved by the bell there. The Shallow Grave barely lasts long enough. Oh, he All right. I thought Juve was going to walk up and try to. Right click him once. And yeah, just like bop him in the head. But at bottom, yeah, Mike. Mike getting run at. But here Little comes Eagle. Trouble, Part hey, two. the stun. They are going to be able to chase down this hero. I don't think there's any way AY can get away from this one. He's got to down. A little bit more nuking damage. Give him the Aphonic Shield. Oh, he doesn't have the mana for it. Wow. AY don't gets here, away Mike. with 40 HP. Oh, and Mike almost dies as well. But still... Man, if he could have gotten that kill on to Envy, he would have been such a high level on the Sven support. That would have been four. And you need, like, because your laning phase is the part that really sucks for Sven support, right? Yeah. Oh, man. So if he could have gotten that early boost, it would have been a big win for Still, Team Freedom. Still, laning phase yeah. going quite well for uh, Team Freedom. Yeah, they're playing very active. Uh, they are going to be able to get the pounce here on MSS. MSS knows enough that he just fights. Yeah, he's got Grave. Shay, and that's the best way to do it. He's got Grave and Heal. Not worried at all. Level 3 Dazzle, Double pretty nuke. strong. Eternal Envy turns on the Mana Shield, though. Yeah, look at this SF. With the boots, he just runs at him. Can't really do much. Now he's going to get the bottle and uh, some raindrops. To be clear, though, is, is this is how the matchup's supposed to go with the SF? Uh, or do you think Tomato's... I think he got Souls too, too fast. Yeah, okay. So Eternal Levy just didn't get the early denies necessary when, to... Uh, when you're at this point, it's very easy for the Shadow Fiend to bully you. Right. And Tomato played this very well. But maybe if they're in a position where... I don't know. If the lane goes a little bit more even in the beginning, maybe Envy having a little bit of lead, then he could abuse him a little bit more. But, I mean, that was really fast boots from this SF. And that allows him to just kind of play this game. And at bottom, Eagle just soaking up XP. I mean, this roaming Sven has done a lot more than I had anticipated. Yeah, it certainly has. Seems to... Uh, <laughs> or like the old suicide meta with supports. Yeah. Seems like uh, Sven <laughs> is... He's dying a lot, but it's kind of beneficial. It just gets that quick, you know, mana, and then he just TPs to another lane and runs at heroes to, to stun at them. I mean, he slowed down uh, Envy's game considerably. Like, yeah. Despite Envy getting that kill, how much gold did he get for that? It, he didn't even get the last hit. Rose got 220 gold for the last hit, and it forced him out of lane for such an extended period of time. This top rune, he needs it. He gets it. Arcane rune for an SF. It's going to be low cooldown on raises, easy to spam. Noticing, by the way, a lot more people aren't grabbing uh, Ring of Aquila anymore. I felt well, that too. Some of these in general, like this, the Slark, for example, is going for the Iron Talon first, or he's not. But the Shadow Fiend doesn't really feel like he needs to rush it like he used to. Before, it just felt like every Agi hero default item go ring. Something feels off about the item nowadays. I mean, it, it's got to be some of the other items. And, and again, Shrine as well as um, this Infused Raindrop giving mana regen. Because that was one of the big things about Infused Raindrop is that a lot of these agility carries still had some abilities they needed to expand. Yeah. The SF was obviously one of them. Right now, it's Dazzle. Going to pull some Ancients for this Medusa. Good play by her. And Shadow Fiend just going to play it safe. He's got an Arcane Rune. He wants to use Raises in the jungle. I'm going to pick up a Bounty here. Uh, and now, at bottom, they've de-warded. They've only got this ward mid. They've got this one up at this top area now, freshly planted as well. But AUI has not had the most fun of games. Pressured quite heavily by Mike. Yeah, even now, he's playing a bit back. Not sure if the Sven is going to rotate onto him. Mike's Mike just pops his head out. He's going to take the creep wave. Force AUI to have to deal with a potential tower dive. Or let the creeps just hit the tower. Good timing for it too with a siege creep coming in. They're gonna know that the Warlock's down here too. 
They are going to go for the dive. AY doesn't have a TP here. Any from, from his team come is he gets a swap off. They're still going to try this one, even with the Medusa, Medusa TPing in. It is not the Medusa isn't really a threat, but AY starts turning around. A lot Dusa of coming in now. He's getting some damage onto Ix Mike. Ix Mike is not level six, so they might be able to finish him off here. He is going to run into the tower. No, yeah. he's not. Snake pops one. It's not enough. They get that kill. So that was way too over aggressive. They don't have kill potential. Yeah, as soon as the swap went down, I thought, okay, that's that's good reason, right? You forced a TP. That's all you gotta do. And a top that is a free tower as a result. Uh, I think that's an okay tower to give up though. The dire top tier one. Yeah. And your shadow fiend still pretty much going relatively uncontested here. Why does have 17 oh, magic six charges and Mike so much still damage. not going to get his level 6. Dice again in lane. Great heal bomb there from Rose. That was so much damage. Just immediately gets popped. And now AUI's game becoming more okay. The pair of kills like that. <laughs> Attempt to get both CS. What do you do if this year the Sven? You just grab something like a Solar Crest and hope for the best? Yeah, probably. That's Solar your Crest gets you the mana regen you want. I mean, you're eventually going to try and get Blink Dagger too, right? They, they need a better source of initiation. That would be the hope, Austin. You're, you're basically playing poor position Slardar on hard mode. On hard mode. You're reverse Slardar. Instead of taking armor, you give armor. Yeah. So they're dealing damage, you deal no damage. Up at top, DSJ gets off his ultimate, he'll be okay. He barely has enough mana. It's going to be him completely ba mana burnt out, so MSS feels very comfortable staying in this lane. This is a free Beastmaster game. He's still got uh, a TP too. No disables to stop it. That is such a fast Necrobook. Mm -hmm. Radiance MSS Beastmaster. Beginning to think that's... Uh, that's the most fearful of the MSS heroes. Just has a, a, you know, MSS is great at being very active and finding farm, but his Beastmaster is particularly good oh. at farming. But as you say that, Tomato with the Invis rune does find a very nice rotation. Bottom lane, Eagle is going to end up dying here. It's a long range swing of the briefcase that comes out from SDG. Very well done, as now Tomato rotates bottom. That was a very big kill for him, though. That was the top net worth on the side of the Radiant. Now he's in a very good position. They do lose this Sven, but again, you're killing a 206 gold Sven. And you picked up double that in getting this Beastmaster early on. What I, what I really like about MP's lineup here is that they do have this sort of uh, static pressure. Beastmaster is very good at that, his strong laning phase. He's able to threaten towers with just himself in lane oftentimes. Medusa is very similar to that in mid. And I think that's, um, you have to be very disciplined if you're against that Medusa to deal with that, right? Because you said this mid tower is all important. And usually though, you just see a mid push coming and you stand in front of it. But here the Deuce is sort of insidiously picks it apart with uh, with this consistent, you know, slow amount of pressure that she's putting yeah. out. You're just going to chip. And the thing about SF is that he shoves out the lanes. He can force the other enemy mid out, but you have a hero like Deuce mid who doesn't get shoved out very easily. He was grabbing a blade mill first. Curious item choice. For Dusa? Yeah, that is. I mean, he gives him armor, gives him mana, gives him damage. You do have to target a Dusa first sometimes. I mean, if she's the one standing in front of the tower push, then. This is going to be. have to do it. Free tower though, a mid tier one. They're gonna trade it for this bottom tier one, but NP obviously very happy about this trade. They're okay with it. They're gonna take control of the enemy jungle too as a result as a result of this mid tower being taken. They might even go just immediately in for a Roshan. I think that's even a better play. Oh wow. The Necronomicon, is that still one? Yeah, it's still one. But AY obviously is great at being able to do Roshan conventional spirit, minus armor. They are not gonna get there in time. Increase in physical damage. Certainly not. That is what NP does very well. He's Radiant's just sneaking Roshans. Is under attack. Roshan has 
It does create some space for BSJ up at bottom, but... Aegis obviously well worth it. It does seem like Team Freedom are going to have to play uh, a rather slow game this time around. And and I'm fearful that this Lark is just not going to be able to do well enough. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. You know, because if uh, NP start five, five minutes, Slark is... He gets active somewhat at 20 minutes, but it's pickoff, right? Yeah, he's he's got to really, split the map really up. Team he's got to open up the map right now. That's the way that you want to play this. And you want to force NP into these desperation pushes where they're just hoping to get anything that they can. And that is one of BSJ's specialties. He really likes split pushing. So, And there's someone else on Team Freedom really do it. Abaddon's, you know, you could do attack. a little bit just because of the security that you know you're hard to kill. Um, SF is never really going to be alone in the side lanes pushing out aggressively, so it's pretty much up to BSJ to keep the pressure off of their towers via split pushing. Looks like they are going to go for a smoke and challenge NP here at the bottom lane. Now, if they just see two heroes, I think they just saw Dyer's maybe one at mid. And if AUI's been seen at top lane, this gives them a lot of confidence to try and force a fight at bottom. As that Aegis is up at top, but it looks like uh, NP are going to be able to dodge this smoke. Start grouping up at top lane. Good call by NP. Yeah, that was a very good call. There's not a lot of D-Wave uh, push from Team Freedom aside from the Shadow Fiend. And I think he's pretty reluctant to the front line because if you just get swapped... There goes Shadow Fiend, who's grabbing Lincoln's first item. He does have an invis. Smoke going to get broken. They're going to lay down sentries, but unfortunately not going to grab this SF. Start scouting things out. They're going to be able to say Juve coming across. I don't know if this MC is a fight that you necessarily out. take. BSJ doesn't have TP for 15. And NP, it looks like Radiant's they're just continuing to go. Under just bowling down towers. Lincoln's up next for Eternal MB. And now they're going to back off. They realize going for the high ground might not be a thing. Eagle, though, sort of in a precarious position. They don't Radiant's necessarily want to walk up that cliff. There attack. is a shrine available for them. So fighting there isn't horrible, but at bottom, Dusa got to get out, and this is going to be the mad rush into their own jungle. Yeah, they see the TP at bottom lane. They know there's only four up here, potentially. Oh, there's not a TP available yet for AUI. He's oh. got to get out of the... BSJ got slowed down by a counter ward, and the boars, AUI, going to try and TP out now. Oh, there is so no far. stuns. No stuns whatsoever. Maybe if Eagle so. went the same way, they could have caught up. Yeah, maybe. Run, Wolf Creep. And Helmet Dom new switch, so you thought you were gonna get that 125 gold. That was cruel, he just swapped him out for another wolf. Yeah. No true allegiance from AUI. That is a Necro 3 Beastmaster. Early Necro 3s are so scary. At this point, the Necro 3s are more dangerous than the actual hero. Yeah. NP Dyer's right now, though, tower is under attack. trying to make advantage of this as despite. Uh, the successful early game, Illusion. top two net worth heroes are heavily on the side of Team Freedom. The Slark has just had all the space in the world to sort of just be able to do whatever he wants. He's picking up Aiko Saber next. Yeah. And what he's doing right now is just walking around. They gave him the sentries that Jubei bought, and he's just dewarding. Very good team play. I like the team play, but I, I do feel like I'm looking around and I'm just not seeing any heroes farming. I feel like they're giving up a lot of map control, and Tomato's the only one who's pushing out of lane right now. Yeah, I don't think you jungle right now if you're BSJ. You want to shove out waves. Does mean that uh, NP are going to be able to get both mid and top. Part of it is this Aegis. AUI is pushing out top lane by himself, knowing that he can't really be challenged thanks to the extra life. And then uh, Medusa is obviously another one of those heroes that can't really be challenged in the push either, so... It does leave only one lane to be pushed out by Team Freedom reliably. Tomato though, just continuing to truck along, keep farming. BSJ doing the same. Everyone's just farming right now on the side of uh, Freedom. At least their two cores are keeping up at all times. Mike's not even that far behind. I do really like the Lincolns this game, especially if this is going to come down to NP pushing high ground. Swap and uh, Beastmaster's call are 
Obviously, there are two only real good forms of initiation, and both are going to be blocked out by the Lincolns. So, I like conceptually, I like the idea of uh, what Tomato's trying to go for. It does obviously limit his offensive power, but that comes more from <laughs> reaching level 20 more than anything, right? Plus two damage per soul. Feel free to agree with me anytime. Let's do it. Yes. <laughs> I was thinking about it for a while. I was like, is there any merit in going for BKB? Yeah. I was like, mm, not really. Medusa Stone Gaze is still good against you. Roar, obviously. <laughs> Swap. There's just too much physical damage. Yeah, exactly. The there. only thing that you'd kind of negate is the ET, but there are ways around that. You're hoping that BSJ just blows that dude up anyway. We do have another good way to be able to deal with the Roar thanks to uh, the offlane of Baden. Oh, BSJ might go down here. MSS gets the angle, but... Ooh. Oh, he's going to roar the side. Oh, that was sick. MSS oh, you stops boss. the TP. BSJ is now he's out, out of mana. mana. And he's going to be called out by the Hawks. So he won't be able to get that extra movement speed or the reach. And he's just going to be slowed down. That was so sick from MSS. I didn't even know that push disabled TPs. I thought it yeah. just pushes him. No, it, it's very cool. That was very awesome. Well it's a shoved aside. He, that was quick thinking, and that was a huge pickup. Like, they absolutely needed that. This Slark could have just gone out of control, but it resets the momentum a little bit. Because right now, this farming pace, Freedom was comfortable, but it's a cool play. I just figured it would work like four staff, you know? No, no, dude. Ah. Shoves you aside. You get slowed and everything. Rah. So it stops, uh, so it's just like a, is there like a mini stun that happens? It's, I don't think it's like a, I think it is, it's like a displacement, right? The same as swap in that regard. Okay. As soon as he did it, as soon as I was like, oh, he's going to get him. Yeah. He was right next to his own creep too. If he just walked up like one centimeter, he would have been fine. But he's just like, there's no way for me to die. He looks at their heroes. Lincoln's is almost finished up for the Medusa. Uh, are you a fan of, is it Lincoln's for you? Is it Manta or is it both? Uh, Pretty sure nobody likes both. Right? I'm okay with just the Lincoln's. You need okay. the mana regen quite badly. Yeah. You don't need both though. This game is a lot more of the pace that I expected the last game to go. Just a lot of farming. An unfortunate pick off here or there. Eternal Levy will turn this into a fast Scotty. Of course, the NP is not terribly rushed either. They are taking a very similar approach to game two as they did in game one, where they don't feel rushed because they do have this this carry that uh, is only getting stronger as time goes on. Granted, they probably do want to close it out 35, 45 minutes, right? When uh, Deuce has Scotty kind of overwhelmingly strong. But for now, they are just waiting for Team Freedom to make the mistakes. MSS with his blink dagger is waiting for anybody to try and push out top lane. His boar is pushing it in. So someone eventually will have to come deal with this wave. Eagle did have a pretty good idea about this though. He gets a uh, he gets one of those tinker wards down. Doesn't actually scout out MSS, and in fact it's MSS who scouts out the ward thanks to the hawk. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. And he's done a very good job of keeping up with this Shadow Fiend in farm is neither team really risking the team fight is. At this bottom half, BSJ gonna just make the jump on the AUI, not nearly enough damage though. Yeah, Probably just backs out and recircles. They've been very efficient with the the double ancients. Since there's now two ancient camps per side, they've been using both AUI and the Medusa to farm that up. That. MSS occasionally takes a break from pushing out a lane to see if he can set up a kill. Trying to stay off map most of the time, uses boars to push out waves and only farm neutrals if he wants to farm in person. As bottom, just gets shoved back. NP in a type of game where you know, they just continuously shape the lanes back. Team Freedom shoves them in. And next, Roshan is Ooh. available. Desolator for uh, SF. Is that the item? 
guess he feel like he needs more damage. Maybe a quick kill on SVG. We'll have to see. He is going to be able to oh, not get the stomp off. Oh, the SJ did pop his ulti here, though. AY was looking for the angle. They are going to be able to uh, back out. Quick kill and back. About time that Freedom got a little aggressive. They need to keep something. an MP honest. Yeah, exactly. You need to make some moves. When it when you lull into a game like this, uh, I think we talked about it before. It's at some point, teams think it's just going to be the same thing over and over again. Yeah. And then one team just bursts out. Unfortunately, it wasn't on the core or anything like that. Killing the ET, though, is it's nice. Yeah. If you don't do that right, then NP will gradually spread farther and farther apart and be more and more farm efficient. A pick off like that makes it so NP are kind of thinking, all right, might need to group up a little bit more. <laughs> have to be aware of these ganks. There's a Midas now on Eagle, opting not to go for the Solar Crest. Well, it does look like uh, if, if Team Freedom is going to win this game, it's going to be late game, right? So... I can see the the thought process behind that. This ward blocking out the camp. Not that is the efficiency counters. ward. Yeah. No matter what, you're getting ahead because you have more jungle. And Roshan even going to be a thing for NP. Radiant's top tower. And no. It feels like both teams are just super content with pace. NP singing to themselves, we have good cores. And Team Freedom saying, well, we have a Slark and a Shadow Fiend. So who's going to be right? In some ways, it's like Freedom were kind of forced into this, right? They didn't have the, the laning phase that kind of allowed them to truly take over the game. And now they just have to wait until the, the pushes, the high ground pushes come in from NP. They're going to come in eventually, and that's going to be the, the big determining factor. If you don't really have moves to make, this is what ends up happening. And they don't really have moves to make. Do you think that's some fault of the draft? The fact that they don't have moves to make? They don't have opportunities to be able to create for themselves? Uh, maybe a little bit, because they don't—they don't have this hero that just jumps. Mike is playing this Abaddon, having a Sven and an Abaddon. Yeah. Like it, your jumps, your your space creators, your the players who actually make things happen are usually four or three. Yeah. So what you really need is for your cores to become a lot stronger. Like BSJ then has to be the hero that is the one killing things. Initiation out of Jube, MSS, founds his opening, but they are going to be able to get the Chaotic Offering thanks to the Aphonic Shield. A big amount of burst damage, though, comes in for the Snakes as Eternal Heavy is able to clean up too. The ultimate does successfully go off from Tomato, but right in the middle of the race, he gets caught by the Stone Gaze. Ix Mike fighting this one out, hoping to be able to get at least the kill on SVG, and he does do that. But it's a triple kill for Eternal Envy. They take out four of Team Freedom and only lose two. Yeah, their team fight is so good. It's This is the type of lineup that we expected NP to run. They've got plenty of disables. They have tons of ways to keep their heroes alive. This weave can do so much work. They've got a lot of negative uh, negative armor. This ET just pumps in so much damage artificially himself. And now they don't have the big ultimate to be able to defend their high ground. No, they have the heroes. 30 seconds left on the SF. Yeah. The Shadow Fiend is going to go for what looks like uh, just Lincoln's Dragonlance BKB. Thinking about going for a hurricane fight, but he just—he doesn't deal damage. Yeah, it's a huge issue right now for him. As and he's gonna immediately get jumped on, pops the blade mail. Slark's gotta run out of there, and he just continues to wail away on this tower. AUI will take the range track. What are they gonna do for this? Good stomp set up there. Gets Jubei and Ix Mike. Ix Mike doesn't have the Aphonic Shield to be able to save Jubei. A nice double stun there from Eagle, but they really just don't seem to have the damage. A good stun from MSS actually holds BSJ. And Aphonic Shield will save him, though. They still have the ultimate. They now have a big damage healer in Tomato. Maybe he could fight this one out. AY dropping low, but he still has the Aegis and the Shell Grave to be able oh to work my. off of. And it looks like NP. They are just going to take game two quick and clean. As the carries die once again, this is going to be the mid lane racks and probably top lane racks by 27. Or just go straight for the tier four. Is that too MP? You can do that too. They know there's no ability. So there's no rock available. Even if that Shadow Fiend respawns, he's got 10 souls. You saw how quickly they killed him. All of these defensive items for the Shadow Fiend meant nothing because when he walks into everybody, he has no armor. Now everyone's going down. Eagle is getting blown up by this moving tower of NP, and that is going to be game. NP, they may have lost game one, but they take game two with very convincing fashion. And we are going to be heading to the final game of this best of three series. That was just 
Uh, I mean, Freedom, they picked a lineup where they were just too comfortable with the pace of the game, and NP's like, dude, we will out team fight you. We have so much RS. I mean, I kind of felt like NP were significantly far up in the draft when they, um, I think it was the Sven pick that really cost, because then they, they countered with the Medusa. Yeah. And they already had a lineup that looked like he could support a Dusa strat anyway, with the Vengeful Spirit and uh, a Beastmaster. So when you've got those two sort of amplifying heroes, uh, it kind of felt like it was going to be a good Dusa strat, and then they were just such an even game. By just the pick everyone was farming. Yeah, but that Roshan just broke everything up. All right, game two. Not as exciting as game one, but we will have a final clash between these two teams, NP and Team Freedom, in game number three after a short break.